In this video, we'll look at solving linear trigonometric equations. And the equation you're asked to solve is 2 sine of 3x plus root 3 equals 0. 4, 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 2 pi. Okay, well, the first thing is start to rearrange. So I'll rewrite the equation down here so I can work with it. 2 sine of 3x plus root 3 equals 0. So rearrange. I want to get eventually this sine 3x by itself. So the first thing to do, it's inverse operations, is get rid of this plus root 3 by doing minus root 3 on both sides. That gives me 2 sine of 3x equals negative root 3. Again, my goal right now is just to get sine of 3x by itself. I can do that by getting rid of this coefficient, which is timesing sine of 3x. So I divide both sides by 2. And I'm left with sine of 3x equals negative root 3 over 2. Now, there's different ways to go about solving this. What I like to do is say, let some letter, like a, equal 3x. That's nice because then I just have sine a equals negative root 3 over 2. And that's going to be a lot easier to work with. I can set this up as a rotation and figure out in what quadrants would sine be negative. If you remember your cast rule, sine is positive in these two quadrants, so sine would be negative in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. So first, let's draw an initial arm. That's important for the reader to see. There's my initial arm, and it rotates to somewhere in quadrant 3, somewhere in quadrant 4. Let's call those rotations A1, because this is solving for angle A. This is A1. This one here would be A2. And I want to find the related acute angle inside these triangles, so I'm going to sneak in here a little beta, or B, whichever you want to call it. That's the angle that the terminal arms make with the x-axis. And I'll solve the related acute angle by finding the sine of it, sine of b or beta. Again, those are two different letters, but whichever you want to call it. Let's stick with beta. Except when I solve a related really acute angle, because I'm working in a triangle, there's no negatives. I'm just solving with sides of root 3 and 2. How do you solve sine of beta? You take the inverse sine. That's sine to the power of negative 1 of your ratio or fraction here. And you could solve that on a calculator, but I'd rather do exact values. And I can get exact values by drawing this special triangle that contains sides root 3 and sides 2. I kind of need to know that special triangle off by heart, or some way have it encoded in your mind. So I know that this side is the bigger angle. That's pi over 3, and it matches the bigger side. And this side's the smaller angle, it matches the little side. And then the biggest side of all, the hypotenuse, is 2. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Which of these angles opposite over hypotenuse is root 3 over 2? The answer is clearly pi over 3. Its opposite is root 3, its hypotenuse is 2. So the related acute angle is going to be pi over 3. OK. Nice. We're somewhere, but we're not quite done yet. We've got some more to do. We know that this angle in here is pi over 3. And so this angle in here is pi over 3 as well. So we want to calculate a1. And let's also calculate a2. So a1, we're in quadrant 3. When you're calculating angles in quadrant 3, you know that this whole a1 rotation is pi plus beta which in this case the beta is pi over 3. So that's just 3 pi over 3 plus pi over 3. So you get 4 pi over 3. And in this quadrant, that's like a whole rotation all the way around. Oh, it's this a2 one. And come back beta. So it's this whole thing, 360 degrees or 2 pi. Take away beta. So make that into a base 
3, 2 pi out of 3. To keep it 2 pi, it would have to be 6 pi over 3. See, if you divide it, you get 2 pi back. Subtract pi over 3. So that second rotation, A2, is 5 pi over 3. Okay, so far so good. We're getting somewhere now. We have these rotations, but we actually haven't solved for x. We've solved for a, which is good, but we're not quite there yet. We have to remember that at some point we let a represent 3x. So we know that this a1 corresponds to 3x really equaling 4 pi over 3. And let's call this x x1. Same thing for this solution here. So this x equals 5 pi over 3. And let's call this x2. And now we just solve. This is an easy one to solve. You have a 3 here times x. How do you get rid of timesing? Divide both sides by 3. When you divide both sides by 3, the 3's cancel out here. And on this side, you get 4 pi over 9. Same over here. Divide both sides by 3. Why? Because I don't want this 3 anymore. So divide this side by 3. You get x2. But you have to divide both sides by 3 and you get 5 pi over 9. Okay, great. We've got two answers. Now we're somewhere. Now we're getting close, but there's a catch. And the catch is that there is much more than two solutions here. And the reason for that is the period of this wave. The period of this wave here, maybe it's easier to look at it in this form. Either way, there's a k value here. And you might notice or might remember from properties the period is equal to 2 pi divided by that k value in this case 2 pi over 3 I'll, I'll sketch out what that means here's here's a quick sketch this is by no means a perfect scale but there's a sine wave here that's been compressed instead of 2 pi it's been compressed by a factor of a third so its period instead of doing one wave in 2 pi it's going to start here, say, but then it's going to do a whole wave, and then another whole wave, and then a third whole wave by the time it gets to 2 pi. Why is that important? Because what we're trying to find out is where is this wave at negative root 3 over 2? So that would be somewhere like down here maybe, and down here. Negative root 3 over 2, if you know, just from practicing, or you can look on a calculator, what's negative, where's my root button, root 3 divided by 2? It's like negative 0.866. So what I'm really asking is, where is this function at negative 0.866? Well, it's here and here, but it's also here and here. And it's also here and here. There are going to be six possible answers. And the reason for that is directly related to the fact that the period happens three times as much in between 2 pi. Or another way to understand it is that because of this 3, this is a horizontal compression of a third, so you get three times as many waves in the distance of 0 to 2 pi. So how do we solve the next ones? We want to find the other x values. Well, there's going to be another x value by taking this first x value and jumping one period ahead. So take x1, 4 pi over 9, and add on another period, 2 pi over 3. In other words, this x3 occurs at 4 pi over 9, plus I'm going to need common denominators. So make this out of 9, I times by 3, so times this top by 3, and I get 6 pi out of 9, which means there's another place where it's negative root 3 over 2, that would correspond to this one, 10 pi over 9. Same thing for x4. x4 is going to start at x2, this one, and occur exactly one period ahead. That means there'll be 1, 5 pi over 9, plus 2 pi over 3. So that'll be at 5 pi over 9, plus, again, convert this to base 9. You already know how to do that because you did it right here. It's 6 pi over 9. So there's going to be another case where you're correct at 11 pi over 9. And we know we still have two more. There's going to be six solutions because the wave happens three times as fast. So there's two solutions, two solutions, last two. What's x5? May I put boxes around these ones? I got another one, x5. x5 is going to occur a period ahead of x3 because we found this one to here. Now we're going to say here's x3. Another period from then is x5. 
So what was x3? It was 10 pi over 9. Add on another period. And now, probably by this point, you don't have to keep showing the reader that you know how to convert fractions. You already know 2 pi over 3 is going to be 6 pi over 9. So we're going to have another solution at 16 pi over 9. One more. It's x6. Where is x6? It is one period ahead of where x4 was. So take x4 and add on the period. And again, just write it as a fraction out of 9, which is 6 pi over 9. And you get 17 pi over 9. Six solutions corresponding to, roughly to these six points. How do we know we're done? Again, we knew there were going to be six solutions because of the period, or you can understand it because of the compression. But even if you tried to add on another 6 pi over 9 to these, notice it would be much bigger than 2 pi. 2 pi would be 18 pi over 9. So adding on another 6 pi over 9, you'd go past this 2 pi limit that the question asked for. So that's how you solve linear trigonometric equations.